everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I am super excited to be with our guest speaker. And she is an international recognized expert on gender wage gap and salary negotiation for women. She is also considered one of the top resume experts in the United States. Her work has been featured by Forbes, BBC, CNN, MSN, and the World Economic Forum, Recruiter.com as well, Lifehack.com, and hundreds of other global media sources. She is also an international best-selling author of a book called Know Your Worth and Get your worth salary negotiation for women published in 2016 together with me today i am excited to introduce to you olivia jarez welcome olivia welcome to our show thank you. thank you so much i am so thrilled to be here thanks for having me of course, of course. Yeah, I'm so excited. Um, as we are interviewing all of these speakers, I'm most excited about our topic because what you're going to cover is so relevant yet so simple and practical and what we, I know when I first started my business, didn't think much about, but we get to really dive into it. And um, so let's start. Let's start with Let's ask you the question of who is Olivia Jaris and what inspired you to do what you do? Well, Diddy, thank you. Um, so, okay, my name is Olivia. I'm the founder of Salary Coaching for Women, which started out as basically helping women figure out what they're worth is in today's market and actually how to advocate for it started here in the us it's become an international organization now we have communities and like different uh groups that we work with all over the world and it has completely skyrocketed but ultimately my mission and the mission of my company and my team is to close the gender money gap. There's a discrepancy between how much women, both in the workforce and in entrepreneurship, earn relative to men. And a lot of people think that money is a numbers game, but it really turns out that it's not actually a numbers game. It's more of a mental mindset game. Mm. And that's how we've tackled this problem and we've helped at this point tens of thousands of women reclaim tens of millions of dollars that were being left at the table because they didn't know what they were worth they didn't believe what they were worth or even if they did they actually didn't know how to advocate for it so this is what we do at salary coaching for women and this is how we help serve a broader um let's say like the the broader the 50 percent of the population that really is underselling themselves significantly amazing so what inspired you to even notice that wait there's a difference between what men can make and what women can make like what what sparked that insight and um in, in your experience did you personally experience that or like how how did it all start well, I definitely had some personal experiences. Like I think actually most women in the workforce, at least 75% of them do. Uh, but furthermore, my expertise, my former career is in compensation. So that, literally what that meant for me, for the better part of my career meant that I was putting price tags on people on behalf of big organizations, like very large, billion dollar companies, multi-billion dollar companies and organizations and institutions across the globe. And whether that was setting golden parachutes, setting executive compensation or setting salaries for people who were just coming into the workforce, what became apparent to me was not that companies actually didn't want to pay employees equally, but when it came down to asking or advocating for themselves and bottom line negotiating, women either didn't know what they were worth or don't know what they're worth they're afraid of asking for it or even if they know what they're worth they actually don't know how to ask for it 
Wow, this is so enlightening, um, especially coming from, you know, the, the top and coming from you, especially you're, you're, I love the way you describe about putting price tags on people. <laughs> like I never, like I can so envision that and how that felt for you. And so incredible. And so let's dive right into it. So why do you think 75% of women struggle in this area? And I quite honestly, I think it's more, I think it's more like 90% of women, because here's the thing, when you hear about the gender wage gap being a woman earns 75 cents for a dollar that a man earns that we're talking about the gender pay gap, right? The gender wage gap. We're not even talking about this huge shift, this huge revolution that has happened, which is a welcome thing of women shifting into entrepreneurship. That gets even larger because it, it exacerbates the problem of women being conditioned to feel less than deserving, to not feel good enough. And again, I mean, we inherit this from society, from our upbringing, right? There's certain traits that are okay for men to have that are not okay for women. Like it's okay for a guy to be assertive, direct, uncompromising, go after what they want. I mean, when you think of a good negotiator, most people envision like a guy with a briefcase or like, you know, uh, like some man dressed in a suit in an ivory tower doing his thing, like hustling. And th those are all very masculine traits. That's not expected of a female. And this is regardless of your gender affiliation. Women are kind of, uh, since we weren't the first ones to get into the market, to be players in this creation of wealth back when the industrial revolution happened like, like let me backtrack you a little bit so back when the industrial revolution happened a couple hundred years ago women ended up staying at home taking care of the kids working with the remaining crops the men were sent forth into the workforce which was akin to the men being sent into production of money and production and printing of money that was their thing they were the first to market Right, so they get to set the tone of what happens when it comes down to the success path for wealth generation. Right. And even though it did many fabulous things for us as a society, what that meant, what that triggered, like with World War One, World War Two, when women started entering the workforce, women we tend to be followers. We're not rule breakers. We follow trends. And that has served us really well in many areas, but this was not one of them. Mm -hmm. So from our vantage point, entering the workforce, we're, we're, we're really smart. We're like, okay, what have the successful people, AKA men who've been in these roles already, how are they succeeding so that we can emulate that? Mm -hmm. And we, and this is changing now, but we were conditioned that if we were gonna be successful in the workforce, we had to follow that pattern. We had to be assertive. We had to be direct, uncompromising, and just kind of shoot for the stars in the same way that men do. Not realizing that even though we weren't the first to market, we have some traits that make us even better at succeeding in the workforce than a guy could ever, ever hope for. And here's like, just going back to that example of when you think of a fantastic negotiator, most people will directly envision like a guy with briefcase, ivory tower, like Jerry Maguire, Tom Cruise, and with his <laughs> movie, show me the money kind of deal. Um, but in the world of negotiators, the hands down revered as person revered as the best negotiator of all time that's not a man it's actually but and this is like by my mentors former fbi directors and people that are really like doing life life like saving hostage negotiations to multi-billion dollar negotiations they all revere oprah winfrey as the world's top negotiator and she's not masculine at all <laughs> She's the epitome of that like feminine, motherly, trusting, supportive um, 
stereotype that we've kind of typecast women into that just belongs in the home. But what we do is teach women is like, no, 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 those traits right there that make you a total badass. And if you know how to use it to your advantage, you can get results that eclipse whatever guy would get. <laughs> I love it. I love it. What you're saying is so empowering and mind blowing to me to to make the connection of rather than really backing down and really accepting the norm and the status quo of why women should stand back. You're really saying empowering women to say, no, use those qualities that we already have that are serving us so well in in our arena, which is originally was, you know, homemaking and all of the things and it really incorporate that into the space that we have and to, really taking advantage of it. I love it. I, I'm, I'm, this is so empowering to me. So with that said, let's speak a little bit about considering we are talking about how to really build wealth. And it's so connected. I feel like when you said that the women have to really feel that they are worth of value before they can even go out there and negotiate for the salary they deserve and such. So Am I on the right track to think, Olivia, that wealth is really based on self-worth and how we feel about ourselves? Oh, absolutely. And it's funny because here's the thing. I'm a numbers girl. I, I was literally deep diving into the data for market pricing a CFO. So I have a lot of female clients who are like very high level C-suite executives who are like, all right, I need to negotiate for this and this and this and this. Like, the money itself, the numbers themselves do not matter. And this is what women need to understand. If you don't feel worthy of a six figure paycheck, you're not gonna get it. Mm -hmm. If you don't feel worthy of a seven or eight figure paycheck or business, you're just not going to get it. Yeah. It starts all up yeah. in here and we've completely forgotten that we get to decide these things. We get to choose how we do things it's like and this is the other thing that i keep seeing you know with the onset of the internet and, and this era of technology where everybody is showcasing themselves as like multi-millionaires or i'm so successful with my business or with my career and all of these things it's like all right first of all if that's actually even true yeah and they're not lying to you, oh my goodness put it on that good on them that is fabulous but here's where the bullshit stops is that <laughs> you don't have to be looking at anybody else to try and emulate a business model or a genius zone or a career path all you have to do is literally close yourself out from all of that and look inwards mm -hmm. you were born i don't know who you believe your creator was or whatever put you on here didn't give you that dream of growth and expansion and massiveness just to mess with you like it is absolutely and i'm not cursing i normally would curse but your dream you were endowed with that dream of greatness for a reason stop looking for external validation or disapproval of that dream just focus on centering in on yourself and realizing that you were meant to pursue it you were given all of the tools to pursue that big dream that you have you just have to make the decision mm -hmm. and that decision is am i worthy of pursuing it if so it's obvious that the next step will reveal itself to you wow i feel like i'm listening to gospel right now <laughs> And it is everything I, I was definitely waiting to hear and it's music to my ears. And it, I know I'm getting so much from this conversation already and our audience is too. And so Olivia, let's talk about now that we know that we have to own our worth, ask of what we want. And now what is the mechanic or what is, I know we wanna go into your other area of expertise and how to know what we want, ask for it, but really develop and create the environment to thrive in by really learning how to monetize our connections. And specifically, I know you're a queen of LinkedIn as well. So how would you teach our audience 
of how we can really tap into that, really stand out as we are, ask for what we want and build a community that's going to support us so that we can all can thrive together. Oh, Dee Dee, that's a perfect, perfect segue because I love this topic. I love <laughs> link. So since you ask, I'm just gonna go ahead and unleash the floodgates. Here is the biggest thing when it comes to both social media and LinkedIn in particular, people get wrapped up in the number of connections that they have or not have. Now, the ladies that we're speaking to here are primarily entrepreneurs, right? Mostly, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, and then in the world of entrepreneurship, we get so caught up on the numbers of followers that we have, the exposure, the influencer status, and all of that BS that quite honestly, has nothing to do with that bottom line. I know plenty of influencers with millions, literally millions of followers who I coach on monetizing their LinkedIn profile because they don't have a clue how to do that. And here's the kicker. It has nothing to do with how many followers you have. It has everything to do with the relationship and the energy that your direct connections have with you and here's the thing the beautiful thing you don't have to have millions of connections heck i barely have like ten thousand connections on linkedin something like that i don't know i mm -hmm. i don't even care mm -hmm. and yet here i am very successful entrepreneur with millions of dollars and three different companies that i run and i utilize my linkedin to use it multiple international companies too so what I'm trying to tell everybody who's watching this is stop focusing on the number of followers. Start mapping out a path so that when your dream customer sees your profile, and of course, there's a myriad of different ways in which they can see you, but the whole idea is don't use your LinkedIn as a bragging post for all of your accomplishments and your accolades. You need to have your LinkedIn reflect literally what your dream client wants not what they need what they want mm -hmm. so that they can see you as like oh my gosh where has dd been my whole life to help me solve my deep-seated problem right and once you've identified who this dream client and who this dream customer is you can reach out and invite them to join your community and invite them to be part of a community of like minded women so there's an entire process that we follow for all of our different um, paid and non paid communities, but just to synthesize this. The process that I like following is building to build memberships right I profit primarily on LinkedIn by either creating one on one clients who are primarily C-suite executives, coaches who are kind of ready to just break the $20,000 mark in the next 90 days. Like I, I'm a no BS kind of coach, like mediocrity or people who are like, ah, kind of waffling. I'm like, mm -mm, not me, that's not me. But uh, the way that I generate revenue streams on LinkedIn is one, I have clients, private clients. I teach workshops for companies like Google, Cisco and all those like, big name um is it fortune fortune 100 companies and then furthermore and this is where i think a lot of your the the entrepreneur ladies here might be interested in pursuing is i invite them to join my memberships now there's a specific funneling process that i like doing so that i'm nurturing those ladies every single step of the way and the way that I do this is, well, first of all, I highly encourage that whenever you have a lead from LinkedIn, you take them off of LinkedIn mm -hmm. and into a place where they will be better nurtured because LinkedIn is a really good place for you to position yourself professionally and what have you and to connect with people. Yes, but <clears throat> in order for people to get to know, like, and trust you. You want to put them in a setting that is warmer, that is going to make them feel that they're kind of becoming your friend, 
Mm -hmm. right? And this is why I like to bring our leads into a free Facebook community where I teach them how to use LinkedIn. I teach them how to monetize their purpose or how to grow their dream career, how to make more money, et cetera, right? This is the free place where they get to know and feel my energy. Again, this is why it's really not about followers, right? There's obviously scalability to it, but if you don't nail that process where every person you come into contact with becomes a trusting friend, there's no point in scaling, right? So once you have them in this group, and I totally encourage you to do Facebook because it has a lot more capabilities in terms of groups, but furthermore, it's also a less uh, corporate kind of environment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you upsell them into whatever coaching program you have, whatever you want to send them towards and build from that. Yeah, that is so amazing. And what I so love is the idea of it's quality over quantity is what you're saying. And it's about Absolutely. the quality of the relationships that we have. It's not followers because just like you too, I'm always questioning those people that are like, have millions of followers and they look like this as their brands and the things I'm like, oh, I wonder if this is all real because guess what? The reality is we only have 24 hours in a day. How are they able to do 50 million things? you know? Oh. So, and so I'm not, not to be really cynical or none of that, but at, at the same time, I, I'm just really seeing, you know, <laughs> the gap here is that I'm really just watching for those who are all of a sudden I hear about them and I'm like a doing research for them. And just for like your, your profile too, until we really looked into to see what experts it's really, um, going to create value for our audience. And I was like, oh my goodness, Olivia, where has she been? Right. Just like you said, like you, you have a, a presence now that I'm like, why did we not, why did we not find her? And especially you can talk about all we are about is also really teaching women to really own their worth and, and really understand that. And this whole time, I'm like, oh my gosh, she can talk about that. She can teach the practical things and all of the things. And what I am hearing is, is, amazing it's really building relationships and what us women are really great at <laughs> you know a bottom line exactly. it comes so naturally to women and it's about the presence it's not about the following yes. it's you know being present and fully aware of the conversation that you're having with you know you and i right now is the same kind of energy that you're going to be portraying with a potential client or if you want to get yourself on Forbes or Entrepreneur, I can contribute for all of these different huge media platforms. Right. And the reason I do, and the reason I, I get noticed by them and I get to contribute for them is because what, what I'm saying, when I'm saying it, you can right. tell that I'm present and that it's relevant to their, like you just see, all of these coaches positioning themselves as like, I'm going to teach you how to make millions. I'm going to teach you how to streamline your client pipeline, all of these things, which are like processes that you're going to teach me how, and, and help me figure out what I need to solve. But it really never came down to it. It was never about that. Like what your client wants is to genuinely feel happy yes. and genuinely feel satisfied and not overwhelmed, not spinning, not having to chase after that shiny object syndrome that really i don't know about you but like for the first couple of years as an entrepreneur i lost so much sleep chasing that shiny object syndrome i was like oh but if i do this coaching program i'm definitely going to be able to like make more money or if i follow this platform or use this tool and then also do this and i can do all of these different things and it's not that you can't do all of the things Mm -hmm. It's just that you need to like look inside for what is that one thing that you're called to do. And it can grow from there rather than growing from the outside in. Yes. 
we expand from the inside out instead of the outside in. And, and I, I love that. I love that. Okay. I am enlightened. <laughs> First of all, like I'm, I'm yes, like I'm now being asked to really check in with myself and really consider, am I charging my rates? Am I expanding at the really speed that I want? Like, what do I want? What makes me happy? What's fulfilling for me? So thank you for the reminder. And secondly, I am really excited um, for the strategy you shared already with LinkedIn and how can I really build a community of true you know, trusted potential clients versus just random people, <laughs> to be honest, is what I heard. So what is your, where do you see the future of, of your, your business? And I, I know you're transforming lives from just being on this segment. So where's the future of your company and what is your ultimate vision for us women? I don't know that I have like an ultimate vision for my companies, but Quite honestly, for myself, I'm still hell bent on closing the gender wage gap or the gender money gap. Um, and one of the things that I'm kind of excited about that we're doing right now is, well, of course, I'm always excited about our private communities, but we've created based on the model, like in the way that I like coaching, which is kind of what we're talking about here, which is like, stop looking around. You've got all the tools inside. It's just a matter of like pulling them out and pulling out your genius zone. Um, we've built and we're growing a team in the Philippines of VAs and tech wizards that are trained in like all my methodologies and the ways that I do things so that we can actually help female entrepreneurs build their businesses. Because I know that one of the things that we struggle with as moms and as entrepreneurs is like bandwidth, right? So, and especially in the beginning, like when you're getting started, affording someone here in the US is, let's face it, it's super expensive. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I've partnered with my team that was originally working for me, and this is like a beautiful story. They were originally working for me in the Philippines and we were working through an outsourced agency. And I had a conversation with them one day. I was like, you guys, like, how much are they paying you per mm -hmm. hour from like, you know, and I, I was being made to pay like, I don't know, 12 bucks an hour or something like that, which is still not, not much at all for what they were doing because they're really well trained in all of my methodologies and everything that I needed. They were getting paid like three bucks an hour. And I was like, oh no, oh no, not on my watch. Like not gonna happen. So I kind of poked them out of that agency. And I was like, you guys and me, we're starting our own agency of outsource and it's gonna be fair pay for the folks in the Philippines. And it's gonna be a phenomenal deal for the ladies who need your help. Mm -hmm. So, that's what we're we are and uh again if you or any of your entrepreneurs here need help outsourcing their work just reach out because it's insanely affordable mm -hmm. and yet it also is a career path and it provides like really good quality of life for the folks in the philippines but more importantly they do phenomenal work so that's what i'm excited about right now oh my goodness yes Yes, please. <laughs> I know I have a VA and a team and everything, but of course, you know, for my more um, novice business owners or the startup companies, definitely will definitely tremendously value, um, you know, the support from a team that is not as costing an arm and a leg at the beginning, for sure. And I love that it's not, it's so interesting when someone said, well, well, you're, you're paying somebody from the Philippines and like, how are you not like, are you, are you get paying them what they're worth? And I love what you said. Yes. It just lower cost of living. Oh, yeah. The environment is different there. And so, yes, we are paying them what they deserve. And it's a benefit for us here too. It just happens to be the exchange is different. So I love that you are, you know, so firm about right. that and that you're, you're helping everyone in the in, you know it in in the picture so i love it right and my profit margin is way lower than what these other folks are trying to like milk the system for and charge people right. an arm and a leg but yeah so that's where we are and i'm thrilled 
there's obviously way more other things to come, but I just don't know what they are yet. Yeah. Well, I, I love that. You know, I've gotten the message today for sure. You know, as we are expanding our business, yeah. you know, doing this, is that ultimately that we, we know, like, I mean, I really truly believe that, that I was really put in my position to write my company and to do what I do now for a really special reason. I don't know where it's going to go, but I know that this is where I need to be and where I want to be. So thank you so much for that reminder as well. And especially for all of those, um, your women listening in and you know where to find Olivia. Olivia, share the information of where they can find you. Of course, they can find you on LinkedIn for sure. But is there an official? Yeah, I think we can find you on. I'm very accessible. I, I like to make myself accessible to people. So just private message me on LinkedIn or email me at olivia at salarycoaching.com. That's all. Pretty straightforward. Awesome. Well, Olivia, do you have any parting remarks before we head out? Ladies, it's all about knowing your worth and getting your worth. That's all. Thank you so much. And that says it all. Thank you again, Olivia, for your time. Thank you for what you do in your side of the world now affecting our side of the world. And really, truly, thank you for your time. And um, I so appreciate your wisdom, your expertise. And I know that our audience is going to benefit tremendously. So thank you so much again for your time today. I really appreciate it. <laughs>